can't get to the resort or just trying to keep the stoke of snowboarding going right in your own backyard, we know the feeling. We're going to walk you through three different stages of building a backyard park from a super basic one to a ramped up version and to the ultimate backyard park. Hi, my name is Jeff Oliva and I started snowboarding in 1985, building terrain parks in 1996, and started working for Burton in 2000. And ever since I started, Jake and Donna were passionate about breaking down barriers so more people could have accessibility to snowboarding. It doesn't take much to have a super fun time snowboarding right in your own backyard. For a basic backyard park, we are going to keep things simple by using only household items. Today we are going to use a recycle bin, a branch, and a jib made from a tire. I am also going to show you how to build some basic snow features like a jump and a roller. Drop-ins are super helpful to get a little more speed, create momentum, and they're pretty darn easy to build. The deck part is two feet wide, two feet high, and then the ramp part, it's a four by eight sheet of plywood. And so it's a pretty mellow drop-in. So next I'm gonna show you how you can make a small jump using a recycle bin. Basically flip over the recycle bin, push snow to and from each side of it to create a little bit of transition, and boom, there you have it. A household item typically kicking around the garage is a tire. A tire can be used in a number of different ways to create a snowboard jib. You can put it flat on the ground, you can stand it up. If you don't have any of these items, remember it's really fun to just create whatever you want out of snow. Once you have mastered the basic park, let's step it up a notch. Here I'm going to show you how to make a bigger drop in for more speed. I'm also going to show you how to build some bigger features using things like drainage culverts, which usually can get at a local hardware store, a garbage can, and more things you can do with a tire and a stump. So now we're going to head to a bigger style drop-in. So this drop-in we're going to show you is double the height. It's about four feet. Bigger drop-ins equal more speed, which typically you're going to be using for bigger style features. So many of you have seen these drainage culverts when you go to certain areas and they're building houses. This is something we picked up from the local hardware store. Basically got a skill saw, cut it in half, and what it allows you to do is create a sliding feature, create a jump style feature, many different options with the culvert. You could create a stall. So this, this is a really fun piece that you'll have endless opportunities with. Next, we're going to use a garbage can to create a jib. So with the garbage can, once again, you can flip it on its side, you can keep it vertical, you can push snow up to it, you can just use it as a tap. So if you have a set of four tires, one really fun thing you can do in your backyard park is to create a little obstacle course using yeah. tires. You, yeah. can, so you can set them down flat, you can turn them up, but one of the ways you can really step up your game is to put a little bit of plywood in between them. Our friends at Loon Mountain actually showed me this. Remember what we learned about smart style, ATML, and the compression zones before you start riding. To really take your backyard park to the ultimate level, you can order park features from our friends at Coastal Jibs. Lots of different options. They actually make riglet style features and real park features. For more step-by-step -step directions on how to build a backyard park, check out Burton's blog on Burton.com. Tag at Burton so we can follow along with your backyard park setups. If this video helped you out, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tips and tricks from Burton Snowboards. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the lift line.